Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Simply Complex YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to get an element ID from an element inside of Dynamo using Zero Touch. So today we're going to be doing zero Intro to Zero Touch episode 202. If you're brand new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. All you have to do is go to simplycomplex.org, cruise over to the YouTube link, or you can go directly to the Simply Complex YouTube channel through YouTube. Check out all the awesome content that's there, free and waiting for you to enjoy. All right, everyone. If you remember in the last episode in 201, we talked about how to create a custom node to get a Revit category. Uh, today, I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and try to get an ID from an input element inside of Dynamo because in that case we will need to do something called unwrapping in order to expose that type of uh, property. So go ahead and open up your sample project. It's going to be provided with the the actual video. And this is what we created last time, episode 201. So what we want to do is create another public static method and we're going to be sending out a element ID. So I'm going to explain how that works. So we go ahead and let's just get started. We're going to make a public static. So we're making a brand new node, if everyone remembers. Uh, and then we're going to be sending out something called an element ID. Now an element ID is something that's coming from an unwrapped Revit element. And what does that mean, unwrapped Revit element? Uh, basically, any element that you want to look at, any Revit element that you want to look at in Dynamo, it has to be wrapped with a Dynamo uh, shell, if you want to think about it. Uh, so in order to expose its functionality, uh, you have to actually pull it out of the Dynamo shell or the Dynamo wrapper. Um, so there are some things that are on the Dynamo wrapper, if you want to think about it that way. One would be a Revit category, but one thing that's not on it is a element ID. So we have to unwrap the Revit element from the Dynamo wrapper and look inside and see the element ID. So what we're going to be returning is a unwrapped element. So basically that's going to be uh, under the Autodesk dot Revit dot DB that stands for Revit database dot element ID. Let's see if we can find it. Element ID. Oh, there it is. Element ID. So do you remember? Uh, we always have to declare what we're going to return as a type. And then the next is the name of the method. So let's go ahead and call it get ID, just like last time we did get category. And then the method is always uh, closed with the variables. And the variable uh, is going to be a input element because we're going to be sending in an element and then we're going to unwrap it and expose the element ID. So the input element, it would be just like we did last time. So it's going to be the same. So I'll just copy and paste this. Now, if you haven't, if you're new to the channel and you haven't watched any previous episodes, uh, at the very least, I'd encourage you to please stop this now and watch episode 201 so you can understand uh, what we're doing and get familiar with it. Okay, every element needs to be enclosed with curly braces. And that's where we put all the super awesome stuff. Now, in order to get at that element ID, we need to unwrap the element. What element? We need to unwrap this element that's coming in as an input. So in order to unwrap it, we need to use a certain element called internal element. But in order to do that, we need to turn, we need to uh, create an object. So what we're going to do is we're going to first declare its type and that's going to be autodesk.revit.db.element just element only Let's see here there we are that's going to be the type 
and we're going to call it unwrapped element. That's just the name. And since it's a statement, we close it with a semicolon. So all we're doing is we're creating a new variable and that is going to what's going to be equal to our unwrapped element. Uh, so we need to say unwrapped element equals now this is where uh, it gets important uh, now we're gonna say input element because the input element is what is coming in from the input port now we press period and we look through here and we find out all the things we can do to it one thing we can do to it is use this particular property and that will unwrap the element so if you remember last time we were able to get the category but we don't want the category anymore because we have it we want to use internal element when we use internal element it will then make this unwrapped element it will unwrap it it'll expose what's inside of the dynamo wrapper I know it's a little confusing but this is just something that we're always gonna have to deal with anytime we wanna work with a Revit element that is coming from dynamo okay so input element coming from dynamo need to unwrap it and then we work with it alright so just a little bit of management there I guess another question could be why do we why do, is there even a wrapper that I can't answer hopefully one day the developers can give us a little more insight onto why that is. All right, now what we need to do is pull the ID off of the unwrapped element. I always call the element unwrapped because now I know it's unwrapped anytime I want to use it. So I'm going to make another object and I'm going to call it uh, unwrapped element ID. Uh, so in order to do that, I have to first declare its type and it's actually, it's actually the uh, element ID element element ID element let's see if we can find it dot DB DB dot okay why are we having so much trouble autodesk dot revit dot <laughs> DB you can also select with tab dot element ID there it is okay that's the type and then we need to make the uh, variable. Uh, I want to call it unwrapped element ID. That's the name of the variable. Okay, so unwrapped element ID is equal to, very simple now, now that we've got the unwrapped element, we're going to use that unwrapped element, unwrapped element dot okay now now that's an object and it's unwrapped can you see there's actually much more that's exposed on an unwrapped Revit element of course because we're working directly with the element itself so in this case all we want to do is we just want to get the ID so there should be one called ID in here just ID simple ID ah there it is okay so now we got it the next thing we need to do is <laughs> return it okay. now since we're not returning an element we're actually returning the ID of an element we don't need to rewrap it we'll do that in another situation another another uh, episode where we actually wrap so this one we're actually only unwrapping so maybe we should put in some comments here so here here we are unwrapping the input element from dynamo yeah that's what we're doing here okay and then here we're actually getting the ID and then all we need to do is return it so what do we return do you remember here we want to return an element ID type and we're gonna return the unwrapped element ID that's what's going to show up in the output port unwrapped element ID and we close it with the semicolon 
and I think we're ready to go. Okay, so we got an input element flying in, rev an element wrapped in a dynamo wrapper flying in. Yeah. Then we grab it, and then we activate, we turn it into, we make a new variable, we turn it into an object, and then we place a period and we say internal element that it then exposes it makes the unwrapped element into a unwrapped Revit element and then once it's unwrapped then we just take it and we figure out what the ID is and then we send that back out to the output port alright so let me build this solution and we'll see what happens okay so let's fire up Revit since we're using the Revit database we do need to actually have a Revit file open first and then Dynamo okay alright I was able to open up Revit and I just placed a wall so we could feed in an element and then we are going to go ahead and start up Dynamo all right, everything's looking good so far. Our input element and then our output says var. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I thought that would have said ID, but I suppose it doesn't. Okay, so let's go ahead and select. Let's go ahead and say Revit selection, select model element. We're going to select the wall right here. All right, and we can already see its ID is 255918. We're going to wire this up and then we're going to hope it actually says the same thing. Here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's beautiful. Look. And it matches. Okay, that's great. So we are sending out the element ID. It was unwrapped and we're sending out the element ID which is great and like I said we don't need to wrap it again because we're not sending out an element we're only sending out the ID something else we should note this is not a number it's not a double precision number uh, as you may think the type of this particular element if you remember is actually element ID if the ID was actually a number then this would we would just say double here but we're not doing that because that's not the type we're returning it's an ID I just want to make sure no one's confused by that because an ID does look like a number but it is not a number it is an element ID type okay everyone thanks for sticking with me I've gotten some awesome questions and awesome feedback I've gotten a lot of people already started on zero touch because of these lessons if you have any requests or comments, uh, please feel free to, to uh, send them in. Otherwise, we've got a lot more awesome content on the way. Thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Thank you.